everyone, Matteo Fager from the ctwinereview.com and we are here again at Southington Wine Experience in Southington, Connecticut with, of course, Matt Uva and visiting from Napa Valley, we have Jonathan Ford of Ramian Estate, a, uh, a new uh, property that I've just become aware of that uh, is really fantastic. Uh, Jonathan, welcome to Connecticut and uh, you have something to say about your fantastic property out yeah, there? Yeah, I'd love to. Thank you. Thank you for bringing us into the state. Um, we are Ramian Estate. Ramian, uh, the, the wine's proper. We're small production. Um, no more than 400 cases of any particular bottling. Um, but we have brought in a, another label we have, a few of them. <clears throat> Payout is our, is our white. It's our summertime white. Um, it, it changes every year um, by varietal. This year, 2008, is Viognier, Roussin, and Riesling. It's 84% Viognier. 14% Roussin, 2% Riesling. So just a little bit of Riesling for just a, a, a hint of sweetness. It appeals to everyone that way, but it's with all those those varietals, it has layers of complexity as well. So it appeals to, to a broad market of people. Now let's um, um, yeah let's taste that because please. that sounds fantastic. What um you um you you're um. You do some uh, sommeliering as well, I understand. So I, I did right now. Am I, You're not now. No, I'm not. No longer in a restaurant, but yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I love hospitality, and it's it's where it all comes from for me. You know, yeah. just let's talk getting about, out and talking to people about wine is, is what I love to do. So when when you what would you suggest? I mean, this food wise. Is this something that you have, you know, I know, people are always looking for, what kind of wine, you know, what does that pair with? I mean, I, I generally like wine on its own. I don't necessarily think about a food that goes with it. But if you uh, pose the question. Well, here in New England, I, I have to say, first thing that comes to mind to me is seafood. It's, it's a nice fresh wine. Um, it is Viognier. It's got a, a good get a bit of body to it and lots of fruit. But... My favorite thing to do with this wine is to cocktail with it. It's, it's, it's got something to think about all in itself. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's good all on its own. But it's got good acid and, and, and a freshness to it to, uh, to work with seafood. You know, it almost has kind of a, a very slight kind of Gewürztraminer esque component to it. You know, it has that kind of. Um, a little bit of that viscosity, that tiny. Yeah, but a little bit of that. Sweetness. Um, cloviness to it. There's almost like a cloviness to it. In a very mild way, you know, it has that. Um, which is nice. I can almost see myself having this with um, barbecued, you know, spare ribs. That's a great idea. It'd be nice. I'm amazed though that the that just the two percent Riesling is still enough for it to be noticeable without being offensive, without I could serve this to a friend of mine who won't ever drink Riesling. And he wouldn't be the wiser, mm -hmm. but yeah. I could also serve this to my in-laws who make rosehip wine in their basement, and they'd be all <laughs> over this. Thing. This is great. I like the just. The other thing that Riesling does is uh, it adds an element of minerality that, again, we're trying to appeal to both you know the mm -hmm. developed palate and, uh, and and people that are new to it and, and, and enjoy sweeter wines. A, a broader market is the idea behind this. Yeah. <clears throat> now, are all three grapes coming from the same place? No. Um, El Dorado is where the uh, Viognier and, yeah. and Roussin come from. The, the Viognier is stainless steel fermented, the, the Roussin is uh, neutral oak fermented. The Riesling is stainless steel fermented. The Riesling comes from, it, from Clement Hills, C-L-E-M-E-T-S, Hills, down in Santa Barbara. And it's, it's just for that, for a little residual sugar and, and the minerality. Just another layer, another layer of flavor component. Now, um, tell us about, um, that's nice, and I, I want to definitely dive into the reds, because this is, uh, we got three wines to try today, and we got to keep it under 10 minutes, so it's always a challenge, because we just want to sit and hang and, and drink and, and just enjoy, but uh, tell us about the winemaker on your, um, at the property, because obviously there's a lot of French influence here uh, across the board. Brian Graham is the winemaker, yeah. um, and he cut his teeth in, in France at right. uh, Chateau Rochefort and uh, Domaine Serigny, which is Jean-Pierre Serigny in uh, Savigny Le Bon. Uh, you get that the classic French Bordeaux style blending and then the Pinots, it's just very Burgundian. And, uh, but you, know, you can't help but the, the sunshine come through in the bottle when, yeah. it's, when it's grown in California. 
No. That's Ryan. <laughs> We're all from Texas. All from, oh, you're from Texas too? I'm from Texas too. Oh, okay. He's from Texas and then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, do you see like bushes like out there all just hanging out these days? Uh, I have never seen any of them. Uh, Brian meets a lot more people than I do. And this is payout. And tell, tell everyone about the, uh, let's go into the other one because you can see there's a theme here with the um, parlay. Nice. I don't like the way you did that. It was really good. <laughs> I watched a lot of Vano when I was younger. Vano, yeah. Con Stilo with style. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Are you still there? Um, well, payout um, is the is the little sister. Parlay. We have parlayed the success of Ramian into into a, a, a new label, Parlay. And if you look closely at the label when you come into the store to buy one, or a case, then you'll see that the car, that, that the back of the label is a Parlay card, like you would see at the racetrack to bet on the horses. The red is the bookmaker, the white is the long shot. Um, so the red is always Cabernet based. 70% this 2009 vintage <coughs> is 70% Napa Cabernet and the other 30% comes from a 3,000 foot elevation mountain vineyard in El Dorado that you can see all the way into Nevada from it. It has snow in the vineyard until May. Um, it's a really cool place. And that's where that blueberry pie effect comes from. Those varietals are Petite Syrah, Syrah, and Petite Verdot. Yeah. Now, I remember this being the last vintage jammier with a bit more black pepper. What was the difference? Zinfandel. Zin. Because they still have, in this store, they still have some of the 08 left. And I think it would be a fun comparison to do on side by side to see that kind of approachable. Exactly what you're saying is true. I think this has, but one of the things that impresses me about this is that these, you know, this is, you know, you're gonna, you could definitely call it a fruit bomb. It was called a fruit bomb, but it's, uh, but it has beautiful, uh, still has balance and structure. It's got the fruit, which everyone loves, but it does have the structure, the elegance. It has a nice, clean finish. It has nice weight to it. It's not, you know, it's not just big and, and you know, it has a, it's sort of like a, it has almost like a, um, it reminds me if you could conceptualize it like a, um, a tadpole. It has that nice big up fruit front and then kind of just tails off a little bit smoothly, you know. The teardrop effect. Tadpole. Yeah, yeah. Effect. I like that. Yeah. I haven't seen that on a shelf talker before. No. I sometimes describe flavors in, in shapes the same way. I call it a teardrop effect. Yeah. Or a, or a triangle, where it's a fast attack of fruit and then a long lingering finish, or something that builds towards the mid palate and then rounds off. Mm -hmm. It kind of gives a visual, a mental visual effect. But it's very sm in a very exactly. smooth way. It's not, you know, it's not um, just fruity. You know, it's. I like the fruit that I'm tasting here. I'm tasting the fruit. There's a little touch of pepper in there. You know, I'm getting a little hint of that petite verdot, which I always like. Um, but it's, um, I'm surprised the price of this is, I think, very, very fair. Uh, it's, um, it's under 30 bucks. Under 30 bucks, which is very fair for this. Because I mean, I've tasted plenty of $60, $70 wines at. Did you get any press on this? Was, was there. Um, we haven't submitted. We haven't submitted. Well, it's small production. What's the production? Um, this one's about 2,500 cases. Oh, 2,500 cases, yeah. There's no reason to send it. There isn't a bottle to send it. You one less to sell. Yeah. That's nice. Thank you. Excellent. Cheers. And this is French oak, or is it? All, everything this is a, Brian Graham is French yeah, oak. Yeah, French oak. Must have been his time in France. Precisely. All right. He's, uh, he's partial. Um, and, and uh, John, so, wait a minute, wait, uh -oh. I get to do one of these, <laughs> canard, which is French for duck, right, French for duck, um, and uh, here, allow me, huh, okay, so, the nice thing, uh, the, um, this property, Canard Vineyard, is um, again not too far. Uh, I, I mean, price-wise, we're dealing with only a, a couple dollars more. Um, and I think there's, uh, there's, this is offering a fantastic value. I'm going to set this over here. Um, tell us about um, the wine process and how this is made. Okay, well, <clears throat> it's one of it's the oldest 
one of the oldest dry farm vineyards in Napa Valley. It's 100-year-old uh, Cabernet vines. There's also Zinfandel that comes out of there that's 120-year-old vines. Um, it's one of three vineyards that goes into Mandavi Reserve. The other two are Beckstoffer Vineyards. Since 1983 was the first vintage that it started to go in, and in 2006 they started to, to hold some back. So now we have fruit and, and wine from the vineyard to share with everyone. Um, there's always been just a little bit made, but now some to share around. Uh, they asked for it to be made in a more elegant style, rather than super extracted or what, and that is just so you can taste through to Calistoga and pick up that little bit of rusticity about the place. All of the wines are made that way. Mm -hmm. Canard. This is over French the, for duck. This is over the top though. When, when I first tasted this earlier, I was amazed to see the price because I initially looked at this as, you know, this is great, but I don't need another $50, $60 Cabernet ah. that my customers have never heard of before. And to see that come out at you know, half of that price is, is fantastic, yeah, exactly. and um, I know what I'm drinking tonight. Very fair pricing for this, because I, I thought the same thing. I thought it was going to be, you know, $50 or something, but it, <clears throat> because you would think production level, um, you know, and where, the, and where the other grapes went. I mean, exactly. You've, you've got those Mondavis back there, and they're yeah. it well into the triple digits. Right there. Yeah. I mean... Well, right into there. the triple digits, 140 bucks a bottle. Yeah. Same juice. I call it a gift to the wine drinking world. They, they, uh, they're practically giving it away. It's just, it's it just is, a it's fun thing. It's just a nice thing to do for folks. Mm -hmm. you know, at well, a, less than a quarter of the price. So to those farmers, you're not giving it away. This is an appropriate price. Do not increase your price. We like this price. <laughs> So Jonathan, um, I, uh, tell us, your, uh, what are you drinking when you're not drinking? Ramey and uh, probably what type of wines do you like other than California? Because you figure a lot of people in the wine industry, you know, they go home, they'll drink a beer, you know, which I don't. I can't, you, know, you do. You, know, you might have a beer when you go home, right? right. So you being in Napa Valley, you got to picture everyone's oh, Napa this, Napa that. What are you drinking? when you're not drinking Napa Valley? Well, um, I have to be honest and tell you that it, it takes a lot of it here to make great wine. To be a part of the great wine business would be um, So, I drink a lot of beer, but I love French wine. Um, in California, I really like, uh, there's always one that comes back to mind that left such an impression in my head, and Arapa Sauvignon Blanc is something that I always made. Just what, and what, what's going on in, in California now? We hear about all of the, obviously, Cabernets and all that. Any particular varietals in California that have caught your attention that you think, I don't understand why the rest of the world is not paying attention to this particular varietal? Charbonneau. 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 That's interesting that you say That's that. That's a little baby. Yeah. Charbonneau. Yeah. Not yeah. enough producers, not enough vineyards. Uh, yeah. And Charbonneau. <laughs> Next show. Phil Coteri, FTW. Charbonneau. Okay, yeah. So what? Oh, well, we should. That's another show. We get into like a whole new conversation on Charbonneau. Sunny and Charbonneau. We'll do the next show. Um, nice. Okay. And uh, any relation to the Ford Motor right. Company? I gotta ask. No, no. And I am gonna tell all of you the truth because it's such an interesting fact. I'll be a little bit. Well, <clears throat> Bob and Charlie Ford. He killed Jesse James way back. That's us. We're all preachers and policemen. Now. Really? Yeah. But Bob right. and Charlie Ford are my great great uncles somehow. Nice. Hey. Right. <laughs> it's a whole a, new spin with the whole gambling good. team. Yeah, 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 yeah. It definitely does. Thank you. I haven't thought to take that. Yeah. You know, my gosh. Take that hey. So here we are, drinking with preachers and policemen. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> all right. Cheers. Here's uh, Matt. You just walked off the camera. Just walked off the camera. The bottle's over there. Oh, um, Gary, we wanted to get a, a little Gary Hovenetian in the shot here because Gary is at Southington Wine Spirits all the time, and he's a a big uh, a big part of um, Southington's wine selection. And uh, Gary, just come on and, and uh, what did I do? What did I do wrong? Just now? say hello to uh, Jonathan. Hello, Jonathan. Jonathan, you're off right, camera nice though. You. He's off camera. I'm sorry. 
Here we go. Who's the rep? Gary Hovenation. Sport Coppola. Wrong guy. Sorry. Okay, just a little cheers. Thanks for that. He gets the good. He gets the good. I the, the, the Waterford. <laughs> okay, so uh, Jonathan, thanks for coming in and uh, cheers and thanks for watching the CTYReview.com. Thank you. All right. Have a good day.